How's it going everyone? In my last Rain Barrel video, many of you responded and said you wanted to see me take this project a step further by coming up with a way to transfer water from my Rain Barrel to my garden using some type of electric pump. So in this video, I will show you my process and the components I use to get the job done. And also, based on your feedback for a question I'm going to answer at the end of the video, will determine if I'll spice things up a little bit more for this project. Anyway, Enough talking, we got work to do. Let's go ahead and get started. To create a solid foundation for my electrical components, I chose to use two concrete blocks due to their cheap price and reliability. The first step was to create a level foundation, and what I like to do is trace around the blocks before I start my digging process. Before I forget, if you really enjoy these videos, be sure to smash that like button because it really helps out this channel and it continues to motivate me to put all this time and energy into making these videos for you guys. After sweating like crazy on this very hot day, I eventually leveled the surface enough to move on to the next step. Before moving forward, I wanted to make sure my PVC line was going to fit properly between my concrete blocks and that my container had a large enough support base. All the pre-checks passed, so it's time to start digging my water trench from my rain barrel area to my garden. Now, if you are not sure where your underground utility lines are, be sure to get a hold of your local locator or call the national call before you dig phone number, which you can find at call811.com. For simplicity, and since I was going to modify this in the future, I chose to dig a 4 inch deep trench to place the water line. However, check with your local code when it comes to installing PVC underground. For my water line, I used one half inch schedule 40 PVC. I also used a series of 90 degree elbows and couplings to create my PVC water line, which you'll see throughout the video. Note that all my PVC connections are currently just dry fitted, and once I'm satisfied with the layout, I will use solvent cement to fuse everything in place and create a watertight seal. I would also recommend that you use some PVC pipe cutters to make cutting the PVC a lot quicker. You can usually find these at your home improvement stores. Next I needed to disassemble my previous garden spigot setup which was tapped into my city water line. After taking some rough estimates by eye and brainstorming on how I wanted to connect the rain barrel PVC connection, I noticed it would be easier if I routed the PVC from the rain barrel on the right side of the wooden post, which meant I had to pull out the pickaxe again. I wanted to have the option to disconnect the rain barrel and city water flow sources from my garden spigot. To do this, I installed two PVC ball valves which are pretty cheap and can be found at most home improvement stores. After the ball valves were installed, this is what the PVC water line connection looked like. After most of the PVC water line connection was set up, I decided to focus on creating the wooden base for the container that was going to house my electrical components. After the base pieces were cut to size, I needed to cut out a slot for the PVC connection and rain barrel hose connections to fit through.
After making sure the hole size was large enough for my water connections, I used some Tapcon concrete screws to fasten the base to the concrete blocks. To improve the cosmetics of the base and to attach the other two wooden base pieces to the middle piece, I used some scrap wood to create the border. Once the wooden base was completed, it was now time to start working on using the primer and the solvent cement to connect all my PVC components. Now I'm not an expert in this area but I do know enough to get the job done. Also be sure to wear gloves to help keep the chemicals off your hands unlike what I did here in the video. For those who may be wondering, in most home improvement stores you can purchase the PVC primer and clear solvent cement in a kit which is what I did. The first step before using the solvent cement is to use the purple primer which is used to prep the PVC surface and start the chemical reaction which will soften the PVC. After you have applied your primer, you can apply your solvent cement, but you need to connect your PVC components quickly before the solvent cement dries. It is recommended to hold the components together for at least 30 seconds to prevent pipe push out. To prevent this video from being any longer, I will not show my entire process fusing all the PVC components together, but know that the same process I used here was used for all the other PVC components. After all my PVC components were fused into place, I began reinstalling my PVC conduit clamps. Next, I needed to prep my container that was going to hold my electrical components. I started out by using a spade bit, but you can probably get away with just using a jigsaw if you have one after you've made that initial hole, or you can just use a box cutter. To pump water from my rain barrel to my garden, I decided to go with a transfer pump from Harbor Freight to keep my project costs down. The pump comes with its own external on and off switch as well as alligator clamps to attach to the battery source. The pump also comes with a green garden hose which was nice. As for the battery, I'm using a 12 volt 35 amp hour battery. In order for the garden hose to connect correctly to the pump, I had to buy a double female adapter since the pump has two male ends. For my PVC connection, I used a female hose connector which I was lucky to find at my home improvement store as it was the last one in stock. Next I temporarily hooked up my garden hose so I could get a rough idea on how to route my PVC components. After the PVC connections were fused together, I went ahead and screwed down the transfer pump which would also help keep my container in place. Before connecting the water line, I made sure all my connections on my pump were tight. However, be sure not to over tighten the PVC hose connector. For the 
first test, I removed the battery in case any major leaks were present while I went around checking all my PVC connection points for water leaks. So far, everything was looking good. After the leak test was complete, I could begin covering up the PVC water line and getting everything fastened up. After everything was cleaned up, it was finally time to test out the system. My rain barrel was nearly full, so it was a perfect day to run a few tests to see how well the little pump could transfer water. The first test was to see if I could use a regular garden hose nozzle sprayer to water my plants if I needed to. The second test was to see if my two soaker hoses would function correctly. The third test was to see if my two sprinkler heads had enough water pressure to spray correctly. Now you may be wondering why I have so many types of watering methods in my garden and the truth is this is my first time setting up a garden this way and I wanted to see what watering methods would be the most convenient. For those who may be wondering about the pressure I'm receiving, the cheap pressure gauge I hooked up was reading about 12 psi, however I'm not sure how accurate this is but regardless the pressure appears to be enough for this project. After doing a jet spray with the garden hose nozzle, I would estimate that the spray distance was about 16 feet. Overall, this was a labor intensive project, but well worth it in the end. I'm thinking about taking this project a step further and adding solar panels to the project to help keep the battery charged and possibly add a way to remotely turn the transfer pump on and off. If you'd like to see that video, let me know in the comments below. Also again, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to smash that like button and so you don't miss out on future videos, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.